reciprocal frame roofs have only been around for about uh, 20 years actually. They were kind of uh, received as inspiration by somebody called Graham Brown from Finthorn and uh, Jack Everett started them off in Britain I think. I built a house from one about 15 years ago and now a lot of people like them because you can put them on a round house, on a kind of amoeba shaped house, you don't even need level walls to put them on and the essence of it is that the poles all rest on each other so you start off with a support pole holding one rafter up you then put all the other rafters on that rafter then you take away the support pole or charlie as we call it so you'll see that in this video so these will be rafters and they'll be uh, arranged onto this henge round here and we're at present simulating uh, where they'll go, where each rafter will go relative to each pole so that we can see how high the charlie stick, which is the scissors that hold the first pole, how high that should be, how high that knot should be above the ground. We're going to measure from there to the height of here and then we'll add that to the height of the henge, add about 30 centimetres for luck and that will be the height of our charlie. At present we're uh, marking all these rafters as they come in and we're taking account of the fact that some rafters are quite smooth and easy to uh, manipulate because there's no particular landmarks on them but others have got uh, knots and little bumps so we have to take account of where they will sit on the, the rafter underneath. In this case it's a fairly straightforward rafter, it's long so we're not worried about enough overhang down there. So we can just take a fairly standard 60 centimetres. Right, we make a, a cross here. We measure another 24 centimetres down to here. And we make a diagonal line there, which we will then cut out as a, a slight groove for the next raft to sit on. So the, the cutting out will be done after we've done this simulation. Why 24 centimetres? Well, we've determined that we want a hole about a metre across. See, that's a metre, so it will be about a metre across. And uh, how we measure the distance between that is we take the circumference, which will be a metre times pi, 3.142, and then we divide it by the number of rafters. So we've got 3.142 times a metre, which is divided by 13, which tends to be 24 centimetres. So if we've got, and this is what I call a rummy, which is the distance between where one pole sits and the next pole sits. So if that is 24, in each case, we hopefully will end up with quite a nice tidy round circle. Okay, the next pole please, next rafter. We've so far got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine up. So there's another four to go. Last one. That's right. So let's give ourselves, turn it round because you've got a knot right on the top here. So this is to ascertain what angle this cut should be at. We won't have it through this plane, of course. We'll only have it through that plane. We won't have it through this plane because it'll be a slightly different angle. Look at that, awesome. Look at Whoa. that. I mean, are we talking awesome or what? Well, you can move it anywhere. Yeah, but... <laughs> What's determining where this end is going? That's irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. It's irrelevant. We're looking at that. That angle there, look. Look. Look, 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 this can go here. No, 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 no it's no, got, it's got to go over, the, over where the middle of the yeah. mark is. Yeah. That's the mark. Mark. And that oh, gives you the direction yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's pretty much How many V's yeah. have I done? Um, They'll be back, don't worry. Now we're starting to think about how high should the tripod be, yeah? So how high should the tripod be? I would say you want to stand on the top rung, uh, the second to top rung, and have feet sticking out this much, 
so you can tie knots, you can bang a nail in. Okay, so what we're doing now is we're, we're trying to find the right height for the tripod and we're putting the tripod in which will be basically a working skeleton uh, to climb up on and then we'll also be putting the Charlie which will hold the first, um, first raft down. Well I'm Sarah Pugh and I, um, myself and Laura run Shift Bristol. Um, we do a one year course which covers um, anything we think is important to sustainability on a practical level so um, gardening and building and energy and um, lots of group stuff all based around permaculture with the idea being to kind of give people an idea of holistic thinking about um, the practicalities of sustainability. Me and Asta are doing the practical sustainability course and this is our roundhouse building practical lesson <laughs> which we're obviously very much involved in at this moment. <laughs> <laughs> the hands. This is the king sideways. Trying to feel the channel. Yeah. Yeah. Going broody so or what? Really <laughs> Welcome Charlie. So Hello. stop there. Walk him over there. <laughs> this looks pretty extra, huh? Yeah. Now I wonder if we can get away without touching there so we can make it even safer. We need to actually turn it right round because here's the first one coming from there, so we've got the wrong angle. Yeah, quite a big, big yeah, exactly, yeah. That's the, We're making notches or grooves in which the next rafter will fit. Thus, Simon's attaching it to one of the poles of the tripod. Do you think that's about it? Yeah. And in theory, you measure from that bit of string to the cross on the first rafter and then tie it onto Charlie when it's uh, half of the dis distance we want. So it's, uh, um, we went for a metre, so it's 50 centimetres, yeah? Yeah, that's correct. Good, okay. Welcome, Ralph. Go back. Okay. Angels of Green Building be with us. Down to your end. Down, down. Okay, keep moving forwards. And then, and then you can still be able to manage it. Has somebody been storing a, a good yeah, branch? Yeah. There's a really big one over there. No, I think a little bit more up, right up the centre there. Just, just there.
if you just look at the gap between the last one and the first one now, you can see already that it's going to be handleable, I think, because that first one is already higher than number nine, and we've got four more to go, and we've got space to get them in. So, so long as this tripod here isn't too much in the way, uh, there's the tripod or the Charlie stick itself. I think we should get away with it. I think it's um, working out okay. Um, Is we've we've got the last one in. Now we now we can uh, we can let down the first one onto the last one, and that involves a bit of dodginess. The most likely thing that goes wrong at this stage is as they go, they pull against the string he's tied. One of the pieces of string snaps, and the whole thing goes a bit out of kilter. But he's got nails there and everything else is tied, so it's not actually a serious danger in my opinion. We've got plenty of overlap, and so we're going to let, let down the Charlie bit by bit and hope that the first one, the, the notch in the first one, will meet the, the last one. And if we're, if, if we're lucky, we'll get a nice circle out of it. <laughs> He's putting a nail there in advance to try and contain it. Yeah. Do you want to push it back again? Charlie now and take him to bits. Well done, well done, well done, Very good. Excellent. Wow. Totally on the case. 3D. You need good 3D, 3D sense for that. You know, you have to tune into it. Well done. Okay. Thank you all for a really groovy day. And see you in the morning. Thanks to the angels for being with us and for this to be up. Great. Well done. Oh. 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 Oh.